In the early 19th century, Egypt had, under Muhammad Ali Pasha, gained its virtual independence from the Ottoman Empire and began to modernise. And in 1863, Ishmael Pasha took over and, looking to rapidly modernise, spent millions on irrigation canals, railway and telegraph lines, schools and the likes. Plus, although he managed to expand into Darfur, he launched an unsuccessful war against the Ethiopians. And along with foreign investors, he helped fund large parts of the construction of the Suez Canal. All of this helped increase Egypt's debt to over 100 million sterling, and they only had an annual revenue of around 8 million. When it became clear that he could not pay back the loans, he sold the Egyptian shares in the Suez Canal Company to the British government in 1875. But Britain and most of the West had been hit by the Panic of 1873, and they investigated the expenses of Egypt and concluded they could not pay back the debts. So an international commission, largely ran by Britain and France, was sent to govern the finances of Egypt, and they forced Ishmael to become a constitutional ruler, with Nubar Pasha as Prime Minister. But Egypt was not entirely free of the Ottomans, and they had to provide taxes and troops to aid in their war against the Russians, further worsening their poor financial situation. Plus, in February 1879, unpaid officers rose up in Cairo, many people and politicians felt angered by the foreign influence in the country, and Ishmael often fell out with Nubar. So Nubar, who had the support of the foreign powers, resigned, and he was replaced by Ishmael's son Tufik and the ministry looking to appease the public rejected plans regarding debt repayment and dismissed the foreigners. The French called on the British to support them in military intervention, but the British wished to delay any action as they were fighting the Boers at the time. However, Tufik was uninterested and incapable for the role of Prime Minister, so he too resigned, and Ishmael reneged on all the debts. However, Germany's Bismarck eventually stepped forward, threatening against all the changes, and all of the major European nations followed his lead. As the ruler of Egypt still needed to be recognised by the Ottoman Empire, they offered to have him deposed, and Tufik took over in June 1879. Meanwhile, in the military there was a great deal of ethnic tension, as most of the high-ranking officials were Albanian, Turkic or Turkation, not local Egyptian, as was the case in many high-ranking aspects of society. Plus, the financial situation meant the army was being cut inside, leaving many experienced soldiers unemployed. There were, however, four local colonels, one of which was peasant-born Ahmed Urabi. Tufik, however, following his advisers, banned all peasants from the military academy, so Urabi and his fellow soldiers protested this, but he was soon imprisoned. But his soldiers freed him, and they remained in Cairo, and he soon became a nationalist leader, and thousands joined in the protests. Tufik ordered them to leave Cairo, but Urabi refused, and in September 1881, he marched against the palace, and demanded the creation of an elected government. Tufik submitted, and the new nationalistic parliament was filled with Urabi's allies, and he began dismissing non-Arab officers. Tufik and Urabi then tried to get the Ottoman Sultan, Abdul Hamid II, to depose one another, and the British and French tried to reassert the powers of Tufik. But Urabi's policies and rhetoric proved to be incredibly popular amongst the majority of the population. But as tensions increased, Europeans and foreigners began to be attacked. Britain and France then, to defend Tufik's rule and their own citizens, and to guarantee debt repayment, sent ships to Alexandria. But this incensed the population who feared an invasion, especially as Britain had expanded into the region by taking Cyprus before in 1878. So, Urabi began to increase the fortifications in the city, and a riot erupted in June, which killed nearly 200 people, 50 of them Christian, sparking international outrage. Ships from across Europe helped escort refugees away from the city, and Admiral Seymour gave Urabi an ultimatum to stop fortifying the city. This, however, was ignored, and as the French had left the blockade to conquer Tunisia, the British alone bombarded the city, starting the Anglo-Egyptian War. 